Hello viewers, welcome to this lecture where we'll be taught the ABC of fish farming. I am Akpos Ejumudo. I'll be teaching you in very plain and simple language how to grow catfish from fingerling to table size and also all that is involved in constructing and preparing the ponds before you stock till when you harvest. I'm going to teach you how to construct and run earthen ponds and concrete ponds. There are two ways to operate a concrete pond, either the flow-through system or the water recyclability system. But for the purpose of this course, I'll be teaching you on earthen ponds and flow-through systems in concrete ponds. Why, you may ask. One of the aims of this documentary is to inspire you to start with what you have. And I know not everyone has two million naira to start this business because that is what it will cost to have a modern water recyclability system. However, there are other ways to locally construct and run a water recycling system which will cost lesser amount of money. If you are interested in water recycling system, you can reach me for more information. Now, back to our focus, which is earthen ponds and flow through system in concrete ponds. Are you employed or unemployed? A businessman or woman? Are you retired or even a student? Whatever your level is, this documentary is not just to educate you on fish farming but also to inspire you and encourage you to own your own fish farm at your level. See, the demand for fish in Nigeria by far exceeds the supply. I personally can testify of this from experience. I'll be showing you practical examples in the farm and giving illustrations on the board. See you after the lecture. As you decide to go into fish farming, it is proper to first decide on what type of fish pond you want to operate, either an earthen pond or a concrete pond. This will help you in choosing the right site for your fish farm. In the course of this documentary, you will be enlightened on some of the differences between operating an earthen pond and the flow-through system in concrete ponds, as this will also help you in deciding which operational system you would prefer. Choosing a site for our choice of fish farm. First, let's have a look at the right site for a concrete pond. Operating a flow through system in a concrete pond involves frequent release of water from the pond as a result of aerating and maintaining it. It is advisable to have a place where the water will be released to without making a mess, or rather, locate it in a place where you won't be queried for pollution. Your source of water should be considered as a borehole is more preferable. Now the earthen pond. The amount of clay in the soil where you want to locate your earthen pond should be your first point of consideration. There has to be a considerable amount of clay in the soil as this will help in retaining water in the pond. A very simple way to test for clay is to take a shovel, dig a 3 feet by 4 feet hole where the pond is to be located. Dig a depth of 2 feet. Check the soil at that level for clay. If you find little or no clay, proceed further and dig a depth of 3 feet. If you still cannot find clay, dig further to a depth of 4 feet. If at 4 feet you still cannot find clay, it is not advisable to construct an earthen pond on that piece of land. Ensure you carry out this experiment in not just one point, but at several points in the proposed farm site. Another thing to put into consideration when choosing the site for an earthen pond is your source of water. Like the concrete pond, the best source of water is a borehole. Whether you choose to operate an earthen pond or a concrete pond, ensure that the location of your farm is close enough for you to supervise, just in case you won't be the one to personally manage it. Now, let's look into the preparatory stages of both the earthen and concrete pond before stocking. First, the earthen pond. Once you secure the right piece of land, dig your pond or ponds depending on the size of the land and the number of ponds you want. 
The depth of your pond should be at least 4 feet and a maximum of 6 feet. The base of the pond should slant to one end. This will allow for a proper and easy draining of water from the pond. Get a plumber to fix the drainage and overflow pipes. The overflow pipe helps control the level of the water in the pond so that the pond doesn't overflow while the drainage pipe helps in draining water out of the pond. Ensure you put a screen like a net on both the drainage and overflow pipe when operating them to prevent your fishes from flowing out. Both the drainage and overflow pipes should be located at the deep end of the pond. The next stage after constructing the pond is liming. In a situation where there is a little water in the pond, pour some lime treatment into a bucket half full. Add some water to fill the bucket and mix properly. Then lime the pond as is done here. In a case where the pond is drained to the ground and there is no water left in the pond, do not mix the lime with water. Use it directly on the surface of the pond. For maximum effect, drain the water out of the pond completely, then lime the surface of the soil. Application of lime has four major effects. It kills predators and any other thing you don't want in the pond. Examples are trash fish, leftover from previous harvest, frogs, tadpoles, etc. It reduces the acidity level of the soil and corrects the pH level of the water. It purifies the water. The lime penetrates the ground and forces nutrients out of it, which combines with the fertilization to form the natural feed for the fish. Fencing The next stage after liming is fencing. The fencing of the pond is done using the net. The fencing of the pond should be carried out 24 hours after liming. This time space is given to allow anything left in the pond after liming that is not dead find their way out. After this, you can now conveniently pump water into the pond. Fertilization After pumping in water, wait for at least two days before fertilizing the pond. Fertilization can either be done with inorganic or an organic fertilizer. In the case of an organic fertilizer, use the chicken manure, preferably dry chicken manure. Soak the chicken manure in a drum of water. Use a stick to stir the bottom of the drum properly. This will make the wood shavings in the manure float to the surface. Take out the wood shavings, then fertilize with the mixture of fertilizer and water.
use an inorganic fertilizer. Use MPK 151515. Soak the quantity needed in a drum of water and leave overnight to ferment. The following day, stir properly, then use to fertilize the same way as with the chicken manure. Fertilization is a continuous process. After fertilizing at the initial stage with either MPK 151515 or with chicken manure, it is advisable to fertilize from time to time with the chicken manure to ensure good water quality. After fertilizing, the preparation of the pond is complete, but wait for at least four days before you proceed to stock the pond with your fingerlings. Concrete ponds. Now let's look at the construction and preparation of concrete ponds. To construct a concrete pond, you need an experienced bricklayer, preferably one that has done a similar job before. Here are some recommendations that will help in ensuring the quality of the construction. For a 6 inches block, the recommendation is 18 blocks to a bag of cement. For a 9 inches block, use 14 blocks to a bag of cement. Take note, the blocks to be used should be solid blocks and the plastering should be double. Like the Eton pond, the base of the pond should slant to one end. When this is done, get the plumber to construct the drainage and overflow pipes and also to construct pipes above the pond and boreholes in those pipes. The pipes will be positioned above the pond to serve as means of aerating the water. An overhead tank should be connected to these pipes. The drainage system will not only help in draining out polluted water out of the pond, but also help in removing deaths like excess feed at the base of the pond. Why the overflow pipe will help check the level of the water so that the pond does not overflow when you are aerating, especially when there is no one around. Treatment and preparation. Once the concrete pond is completed, it should be left for two weeks before giving any treatment. After two weeks, fill the pond to the brim with water, then add the dry chicken manure. For a pond size of 10 feet by 20 feet, add 25 kg bag of chicken manure. Pour it into the water and leave it for one week. This process is carried out to know the solidity of the construction, to know if there is any leakage. This process also helps to flush out the acidity of the cement, send nutrients to the wall and also add nutrients to the water. After one week, flush out the water. Use foam and water to clean the surface of the pond. Do not use sponge or soap. When this is done, Pump fresh water into the pond and you are ready to stock. Stocking. When you are ready to stock, first you have to decide what species of catfish you would like to grow. Here in Nigeria, there are four species grown for commercial purpose. Heterobranchus, Clarus. This species has two classifications, the African Clarus and the Dodge Clarus. Hybrid. This is a cross between the Heterobranchus and Clarus. However, there are some few differences between all these species. Like, hybrid has more tissues, that is, it has more flesh, than Heterobranchus and Clarus. Hetero has more face value and is said to be more tasty, so a lot of people prefers it. Clarus can be stocked congested unlike hetero and hybrid, especially hetero. Survival rates are higher for hybrids and clarus than heterobranchus because you record less mortality. Hetero are more carnivorous than hybrid and clarus. Hybrid and clarus both tolerate lower oxygen concentration unlike the heterobranchus. 
Once you are decided on what species of catfish you want to stock, be sure of the source of fingerlings. Don't just buy fingerlings from anywhere, buy from a reputable source. The size of your pond determines the number of fishes you can stock. In an eaten pond, stock a maximum of two fishes per square meter and a maximum of five fishes per square meter in concrete ponds with flow-through system. To know how many square meters you have in your pond, simply multiply the width by the length and the depth of the pond and divide by three. This will give you the number of square meters you have in your pond. Here is an illustration. For a pond size of 10 feet by 15 feet, having a depth of 4 feet. You multiply 10 by 15 and by 4, which will give you 600, divided by 3, giving us 200 square meters. For an eating pond of this size, you can only stock 2 fishes per square meter, which therefore means 2 fishes times 200 square meter, giving you 400 fishes. That means you can comfortably stock 400 fishes in this size of pond. For a concrete pond of this same size, you can only stock a maximum of 5 fishes per square meter. That is, 5 fishes times 200 square meter giving us a total of 1000 fishes. Therefore, 1000 fishes can comfortably be stocked in a concrete pond of this size using the flow through system. Feeding. When you have successfully stocked your pond, what you will be doing for the next four to six months will be feeding. Please note, you don't start feeding your fishes the same day you stock them in your pond. Feeding commences the day after. You can feed your fishes with a formulated fish feed like Copens or the locally formulated ones which you can prepare yourself. Here are some recommendations on how to apply both feeds. At least for the first two months, feed only with the already formulated fish feed. This already formulated fish feed comes in different sizes. 0.5 mm to 0.8 mm, 0.8 mm to 1.2 mm, 1.2 mm to 1.5 mm, 2 mm, 3 mm, 4.5 mm and 6 mm. For the first week, use 0.5 mm to 0.8 mm to feed. For the second week, 0.8 mm to 1.2 mm. Third week, 1.2 mm to 1.5 mm. From the fourth week till they are two months old, feed them with 2 mm. As they grow bigger, use the larger size of the formulated feed. Feeding should be at least three times daily in an earthen pond and four times daily in a concrete pond. You feed more in concrete ponds because you feed lesser per meal to ensure they finish the quantity given to them. So there are little or no leftover in the pond which will pollute the water. But when you sum up what they eat per day, they actually eat more than those in the earthen pond. When the fishes are two months old, we now introduce our locally formulated feed. Like humans, fishes need certain ingredients in their diet, like protein, fat, carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals. To formulate this feed, get the following ingredients. 1. Gary, not necessarily the ones you eat at home. There are waste from the edible gari which can be used. The gari serves as a binder to bind the other ingredients together and also as the source of carbohydrates. Broiler starter. This contains a measure of all the nutrients. The fish meal. This is gotten from the waste of dry fish. It serves as a source of protein. The soya beans. This is also another source of protein. Granuts, which is a source of oil. The vitamin premix. This contains necessary vitamins and also a percentage of minerals. The palm kernel cake. This is a source of fat, but this will not be used until the fishes 
are matured and are almost ready for harvest. Preparation Prepare the gari with boiled water in a basin. Grind the fish waste to get your fish meal. Fry the soya beans and granuts and also grind them together. Now mix the broiler starter, fish meal, soya beans and granuts together. Add a teaspoon of vitamin premix to the mixture. Ensure the quantity of fish meal is much as fishes require lots of protein to grow. Pour some quantity of this mixture in a basin and add the prepared gari to it. Then mix together. If the gari is more than the other ingredients, add more of the ingredients and mold properly until every part of the gari contains these ingredients. If you can get blood meal to add to this meal, it will boost the growth of your fish. And blood meal contains a lot of protein. Simply get the blood from slaughters, mainly cow blood, boil it, dry it, then grind it and add to the ingredients. The introduction of this locally formulated feed should not stop the use of the already formulated one. Still feed with the already formulated feed at least once a day. Feeding should be done with discretion, that is, feed the fishes till their reaction and rush for the food slows down a little, then you can stop. When the fishes have grown up to table size and are almost ready for harvest, introduce palm kernel cake into the locally made feed for the last month. This is when they are 4 months or 5 months old, depending on how fast and big your fishes grow. PKC, which is the palm kernel cake, is a source of fat. And since you will be selling weight value and not size value, you need your fishes to gain a lot of weight before harvesting. At this stage, reduce the quantity of fish meal and soya beans. Add a lot of PKC and increase the quantity of gari. Feed them with this for the last month before you harvest. Harvesting. Harvest season, your labor is about to be rewarded. Now harvesting your fishes can take days or weeks, depending on the number of fishes you have to harvest. The amount of fish per kg differs from place to place in Nigeria. Here in Wari, a kg of fish goes for at least 400 naira. If your fish weigh up to 1.5 kg and above, you can sell for as much as 500 to 600 naira. Profitability How much do you really stand to gain after 5 or 6 months of working? Here is a practical estimate. If you stocked 1,000 fingerlings, you will spend about 100,000 to feed them till maturity. Let's say you record a mortality of 100. That leaves you with 900 fishes. Now, fishes don't grow equally. Some grow bigger than others. But if you have an average weight of 1 kg per fish, it implies you have 900 kg of fishes for sale at 400 naira per kg. It implies 900 kg times 400, which will give you 360,000 naira, excluding the cost of fingerlings, feedings, and all other expenses. If the fishes weigh an average of 1.5 kg, it implies you have 900 fishes times 1.5 kg, which will give you 1,350 kg at 500 naira per kg. You will have 1,350 kg times 500 naira, amounting to 675,000 naira, excluding the cost of fingerlings, feeding, and all other expenses. If the fishes weigh an average of 2 kg, it implies you have 900 fishes times 2 kg amounting to 1,800 kg at 550 naira per kg, which means 1,800 kg times 550 naira amounting to 990,000 naira, also excluding the cost of fingerlings, 
feeding and all other expenses. Here are some tips that will help you maintain <laughs> the pot. Welcome back. Now you know what it takes to start and run your own fish farm. The ball is in your court. But before you start, I advise that you have a mentor, a guide, someone you can run to, to give you direction anytime you are facing challenges. Then start from where you are. Begin with the little you have. My father, Bishop David Oyepo, said life is in phases and men in sizes. God started with just two people on the earth, Adam and Eve. And today we have over six billion people on planet earth. So I advise that you start with what you have from where you are. The Bible says, though thy beginning was small, yet thy later end should greatly increase. Just be diligent and be persistent in that business and you will succeed. God bless you.